All right, what's up guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media back with another Dokkan battle video. So Global is about to receive a massive, massive, I dare say game changing update very soon. And in today's video, I'll be breaking it all down for you guys. But real quick, before we get into that, I want to give a big shout out to my boy Daffy from Pain Shop on Twitter for hooking me up with some very generous prices on my Dragonstones. If you guys are looking to save yourselves a decent amount of money on your next Dragonstone purchase, possibly to save up for the five year anniversary, which is literally three weeks away, then make sure to hit him up on Twitter. You can find a link in my description down below and make sure to let him know that your boy Tiger sent you. All right, so with all that said, with that out of the way, let's jump into the news and check out what this upcoming update 4.10.0 as in store for us. So first things first, we have the optimization of the process of unlocking hidden potential routes. And it says when unlocking a character's hidden potential on the hidden potential page, you will be able to reverse the character and unlock a route at the same time. So previously, what we had to do was go into the menu, go to reverse, reverse the character, then go back to the hidden potential page and then feed in the dupe, right? But now we can do both at the exact same time and this is gonna save us a lot of time. It makes just being a Dokkan player a lot less painful and uh, these little quality of life changes that just basically save our time and give us more time to do things that actually matter, it's always a positive. So I love it, very nice uh, feature right here and uh, this is what the screen is gonna look like. So basically cutting out an extra step. Of course, we still have to use a reversal metal to perform the reversal. So that stays the same, but uh, I like it. So first things first, uh, optimization of the hidden potential system basically. Next up, we have the optimization of the process of setting support items. So previously, in order to remove your set support items, you would have to go through the entire list of your support items and find the one you want to remove and then click on it, right? But now you can just tap on the actual support item that's set and it'll remove that item from your loadout. And I don't know why this wasn't a thing previously. It just seems so obvious, but uh, I'm glad they're finally implementing it. And that's gonna be similar to when you're removing a character from your team, just tap on the character um, like that's you know already set and it will, it will remove that item, right? So. That's nice as well, same kind of idea with the optimization here, just makes things much faster, much less painful. Number three, you have the optimization of the process of selecting training locations. And uh, basically the previously selected training location will be automatically selected for the next training. So most of the time, I think most of us, when we're training, we use the times two EXP gravity chamber, right? But for some reason, they always default previously at least before the update, defaults to like the lowest training location and nobody uses that. So every single time, especially if you're like mass training, you would have to go through the entire list, find that gravity chamber and then train, right? So instead of uh, making us do that now, it's gonna set our previous training location, which for most of us will be the times two EXP gravity chamber and uh, another time saving feature right there. I love it. And the next one is a big one, guys. All right, this is part of why I said that it's a game changing uh, update because this is literally a game changing feature in my opinion. And that's the inclusion or the addition of the skill orb system. And if you guys haven't been following what's happening on JP, uh, they got this back when they had their five year anniversary. And these skill orbs are essentially like equipment that can give additional stats as well as hidden potential skills to units when they're equipped. So there's some skill orbs for, that's of course like HP, attack and defense, I believe up to 500 for each stat. And then we have uh, different skills, like this is the uh, super attack boost, we have the attack boost here, we have additional, we have some skill orbs for a crit, uh, crit chance, some for dodge chance, and there's three different kinds of skill orbs. The bronze one here can be equipped by characters that are UR status or higher, and then the silver one can be equipped by character th characters that are super attack 10 or higher, and uh, finally, 
the gold skill orb is equipable by units that have two hidden potential paths unlocked, or two or more hidden potential uh, paths unlocked. Of course, for summonable units, that means that, you know, for a lot of people, you can't really equip this one until you have pulled three copies, which is kind of annoying, but for free-to-play units, I mean, most people should be able to unlock all the paths. So for free-to-play units, you can equip all three of them. For summonable, uh, it might be a little bit hard to get this one unlocked, but um, that's pretty much how it works. Yeah, you equip these, and uh, the character will get the specific boost that you know is listed on these orbs. And 500 to stats, especially to attack, can make a pretty decent difference to a character's damage output. But 500 extra defense makes them more tanky. If you get like an extra level 5 additional, that's 10% more additional chance, right? So that's a huge difference as well. And uh, at least for now, I think it's going to be similar to JP where the way to get these skill orbs is through this like Whis training event that can be done once a day. And uh, whatever skill orb you get is totally random. It's all based on RNG. And if you get lucky, you get a really good one. If you get unlucky, you get a trash one. And the good thing is you can switch out um, skill orbs when you equip them to characters. If you get a better one, you can swap it out for the one you currently have equipped. But I believe what happens is if you swap out um, skill orbs, then the old one will be destroyed. So you have to keep that in mind, obviously, when deciding you know, which orb you want to equip, right? Equipment, skill orbs on the way. Huge, huge update. Um, I actually didn't expect it to be this early. I'm not sure if JP got it like a couple weeks before their anniversary or during the anniversary. Either way, I thought it was going to be a little bit later, but uh, I'm not complaining. I'm definitely not complaining. All right, next up, we have the uh, implementation of the sticker system or essentially how it works. Let me just explain it. Um, these stickers are like skins for certain cards and the characters or cards that have the ability to have stickers applied to them will get these like animated effects on their card art. Kind of like LR art, but not quite on that level. But some of them do look really good. Like there's um, the Super Saiyan Blue Vegito, the, the tech one, the Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, and a few others that have really, really nice effects when these stickers are applied. And I'm excited for this, man. I know it's just a purely cosmetic thing. It, does, it doesn't really affect the character's actual performance like the skill orbs do. But uh, still, I mean, a big part of the game, a big part of Dokkan for me at least, is the collection aspect. And sometimes I just like to look at my cards. So <laughs> to me, this is a huge feature. To me, this is super, super exciting. And uh, I can't wait to obviously collect as many of these stickers as possible and apply them to as many of my units as possible. Uh, I don't know exactly how many characters actually start with a sticker effect, but I know there's a decent amount, like a pretty big pool out there. So uh, either way, most people should be able to you know, get a few characters at least uh, with sticker like animations and stuff like that. So like I said, a lot of them are decent. Some of them look really, really good. So uh, another feature I'm very, very excited for. And that's pretty much the update, guys. That is update 4.10.0. Uh, the, the first three are like nice quality of life changes that, you know, have an impact, but they're not game changing. But these two, man, especially the skill orbs, I do think it's going to change the game. And uh, I'm, I'm excited, guys. I'm, I'm hyped. Like I said, I was about to go to sleep and I thought there was going to be nothing. And then this gets dropped on us and now I'm wide awake again. So... Uh, it's gonna be tough to go back to sleep, but it's okay, man. It was worth it. It was worth it to make this video. It's worth it to uh, get this news out to you guys, and I hope you guys are hyped. Let me know in the comments down below how you guys feel about all this. And also, as a side note, just out of curiosity, how many stones do you have currently saved up for the five-year anniversary? All right, I want to see a range. I know some people are gonna say like five. Some people are gonna say five thousand. So uh, let me know. All right. So, anyways. That is the video. That is update 4.10.0 for you guys. And uh, get excited, guys. All right, get excited. As always, if you liked the video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. 
And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media. Signing out.